I'm Sam Bradford and you're watching Native News Today. Native News Today. And welcome to Native News Today. Jason Salzman here along with Gerald Wofford and we are excited about another great Saturday of American Indian news going on out there, Gerald. Now, we have a lot of stuff going on today. A couple things that we wanted to get to you last week but we just couldn't and we got some more stuff on hand for next week as well that we couldn't get in today but that's just good news because it's a lot of stuff going on in Indian country. Well, that's good proof right there, Jason. The Native News stories are um I guess in full bloom, if you will, here for the month of <laughs> October, the new month here. Uh, a lot of new stories that we're bringing you, and as Jason mentioned, we had to put some of them on the shelf from last week so we can bring them to you this week here. So we think we've got a lot of uh, good news stories here for you, a lot of good stuff to share with you this afternoon. Absolutely. we got our great segments uh, still in line, uh, Traveling Indian Country with Gerald Wofford. This week it will take us to Tulsa, Oklahoma, as well as Muskogee, Oklahoma, as Daryl was able to, uh, I guess, go check out the Five Tribes Museum there. A lot of people probably heard about it, but maybe never went. Maybe uh, never had time to go up on the hill there by Honor Heights Park. Check out this wonderful place, but Gerald will uh, bring it to you through the magic of television into your living rooms. If you weren't able to go or have never been able to go today, you're going to be able to see what the Five Tribes Museum is all about. And you also went to the Tulsa State Fair. Now That's right. So many things happening here at the Tulsa State Fair, and yes, that it will be the added uh, okay. uh, attraction here to the news story that will bring you here, Jason, alluding to the Heisman Trophy pose there. So that will kind of give you some clues as to what we'll be presenting along with this news story. The Creek Nation, along with the Creek Nation Tulsa Casino, had a booth out there, an informative booth for all the visitors coming by, sharing some information about the tribe and the government, and as well as some employment opportunities out there as well that we'll share. Tulsa State Fair, of course, uh, closing down this weekend, the last weekend, so if you happen to just go out there this evening or tomorrow, uh, stop by the Creek Nation booth there. But the news story that will bring you, uh, as Jason alluded to, a little bit of a Heisman connection there. Yes, uh, actually, a little trivia for the show, it'll be our second Heisman Trophy winner that we've had on Native News today. The first being the 2003 winner, Jason Wyatt from the University of Oklahoma. And uh, I don't know, we may have another one. And know, yeah, we don't want to jinx anything, so we're not <laughs> doing that, but yeah, hopefully things might we may have a future one here yes absolutely well, so, yes uh, uh, we keep that on the hush hush stuff. also Gerald you travel down to uh, Seminole country we're down for Seminole Nation days a lot of great things going on out there they were rocking the house with exile and Ronnie Millsap on Saturday night but oh, yeah. a lot of great things going on down there well we want to say a special thanks to the Haney family not only Chief Kelly Haney but Jerry Haney and and just all the rest of them there for just being so hospitable to us and helping us show what the Seminole Nation Days is all about and the, the great Indian spirit that all goes behind it. And we'll go behind the scenes with another interview. All that and more on Native News Today. Come right back after this first break. Here at the College of the Muscogee Nation, we pride ourselves on emphasizing Native culture, values, language, and self-determination while providing a positive learning environment for tribal and non-tribal students. We encourage our students to be lifelong learners and to strive for personal growth, professional advancement, and intellectual advancement. Muskogee Nation College. Academic Achievement. Native Values. And welcome back to Native News Today, Jason Salzman with Gerald Wofford. We always uh, appreciate a chance to go out there and visit Indian Country, as uh, you'll see here in this program. And, and Jason, a lot of Native Americans out there are trying to make the best, uh, perhaps, uh, of a bad situation, bad break, if you will, 
continuing on in that true Native American spirit. That's so right, Gerald, and that can't be said more than this group of gentlemen that we got a chance and a pleasure, really, to visit with on Monday. The Muscogee Creek Nation Reintegration Group that's there at the John H. Lilly Correctional Center in Bowley, Oklahoma. Hey, it's a, a few guys in there made some bad choices, but I'll tell you what, Gerald, to a man, each and every one of them, they'll be the first to tell you that. Made some mistakes, and uh, everybody does in life. These guys are paying a little bit more of a price than, than most of us do, but but the fact is that they realize that they want to make a change in their lives. <clears throat> That's what they've told us. And uh, the reintegration program allows them to do that. And we were so, so blessed and fortunate to be able to hang out with them on this Monday. You gotta have, you gotta vision yourself the way you want it to be when you get out. You gotta get the positive thinking going on. You know, I, I wanna get out there and be good to my family and if you can continue to think that way then eventually that's the way you're going to be. We've had a lot of programs in the, in in these institutions you know such as AA and you know all kinds of programs and, and none of them's ever done anything for any of us because I, I believe that we were going into them for all the wrong reasons and not for ourselves. and that's the reason why this program here is a big difference to a lot of us because it gets back to the spirituality part of our culture and our, our traditions and uh, uh, as as Indian people we all know that that to get back to the focus of the center of our culture and our traditions it, it brings a balance and a peace and harmony to ourselves and we go into it with respect and it just that's what makes it different and changes us as an individual individual and that's why this program has been a big deal for us here it's the first that I've been in and and I've seen it I've seen it affect a lot of these brothers and, and that's a good thing too so you know and it, it's different uh, that's the reason why I think it's a good program. Uh, it, it's changed a lot. This is our second group, and uh, as their spiritual leader, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I can't get no plainer than that. I'm, I'm with them every day, so I know that it's done some changes in, in, in their lives and made changes for them, and they're wanting to change so that they can get back out there in those communities and, and be a productive, uh, a productive father or brother or uncle or whatever it may be. And, and try to bring change to, to, to their loved ones and to themselves. So, so you know, it's, I think it's great. This is a well body coins that we received. It has a, a spiritual prayer on the back. And there's kind of a little joke uh, that we use that if you want to use alcohol or drugs, you'd put this in your mouth, and if it melts, you can go ahead and do so, but of course it'd never melt. So, you know, the answer is on the back is the prayer and the spirituality of it. But I always keep it in my pocket to kind of remind me where I come from. When they come in here, they wouldn't be here to begin with if they wasn't ready to make a change. You see what I'm saying? And and I guess it's because it's so it's so close to 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 you know to reality that it touches things that uh, that you probably wouldn't get if you went to. I'm not saying things about these other bad about these other programs, but it, it's just different. I mean, and and. and that's what, that's what they all like about it, and that's what I like about it. Hi, I'm Gerald Walford, and we continue traveling Indian country all throughout Native America, Oklahoma specifically. We made some special trips to the Tulsa State Fair with the Creek Nation Casino, and the Creek Nation had a special informative booth there for all the guests to come by. We're also traveling over into Muskogee, where none other, the very special museum, the Five Civilized Tribes Museum, is open and Mary Robinson gave us a very special tour of this museum. Welcome, Gerald, to the Five Civilized Tribes Museum. It's well, a pleasure to have you here today. Well, thank you. Talking here with Miss Mary Robinson, who is Executive Director with the Five Tribes Civilized Museum. Well, Mary, as always, it's a pleasure to come over here and to visit and everything. And as always, you got some spectacular things here. Tell us a little bit about it, please. Well, this is our Trading Post gift shop, and we do buy directly from the artists and the artisans. They bring their uh, crafts and their arts into us, and we buy directly from them as much as we possibly can. Uh, would you like to see a little bit more about the museum? Absolutely. Do you know about the museum? No, tell us a little this bit about it. This is in the... The museum itself is in the 1875 Union Agency building. This was the first building built to represent, through the federal government, all five tribes in one agency. The land itself 
was originally Muscogee Creek land. Muscogee Creeks gave this part of the land and the park down below. So the Muscogee Creek Nation, we do owe a lot of gratitude to for this wonderful um, setting that we have for this building. So come on in, let me show you. I love this old building. So it's so much a part of the museum. It's as much a part of the museum as the artifacts that we have in the museum. We always begin with the removal room. This is the beginning with the Indian Removal Act of 1830. This is the period of time when Jackson decided to enforce the Removal Act. Now the interesting part about that, you know, Jackson really gets the hardest hit, but there were many other presidents that all wanted the five tribes removed from their rich homelands in the southeast. Uh, as the settlers moved in, they saw the wealth that the five tribes had developed, and uh, they wanted their land, is what it was. Um, we have, we also show the map. We have the map that begins with the original lands that were promised to them west of the Mississippi. During this period of time, Indian Territory was still part of the Louisiana Purchase. And as you can see, Indian Territory was supposed to be almost all of Oklahoma, with the exception of the Panhandle and just little bitty pieces out. But the Chickasaws and Choctaws were to inhabit the lower from the east to the west and the south. The Muscogee Creek and the Seminole would share the midsection. The Cherokees would be in the northeast and then the Cherokee Outlet would be the rest of the land. This was for Cherokees to come later on. Well, the Civil War came along, and after the Civil War, as you know, the uh, Reconstruction period began. This was when the lands were severely diminished. So by the time of statehood, this is all the lands that were left for the five tribes. Uh, the thought of the federal government was not only were they going to have the five tribes in Indian Territory, but it was going to be for all tribes. And so they were going to remove other tribes into Indian Territory. So that's why there's so many tribes in Oklahoma. I want to talk with you, too, specifically about the artists. You mentioned okay. earlier there's so many artists here that mm -hmm. contribute and sell their work here at mm -hmm. the museum. I mean, just tell us a little bit about some of those artists. Okay, well, right now we have Jerome Tiger on exhibit upstairs and AC Blue Eagle. We just received from a generous donor 35 uh, signed numbered prints by Jerome. Many of them I had not seen before. So the gallery is just beautiful. Mary, it's uh, just as you mentioned here, a very exquisite work. Yes, it is. It's absolutely fabulous. This is. Well, I can always say this is my favorite part of the museum, but then I look around and there are other parts. As you see, we do have Jerome Tiger's work. The piece that is at the head of the staircase, that actually is the first piece that was acquired by the Five Civilized Tribes Museum for their permanent collection. The Five Tribes Museum here, it's a jewel to the city of Muskogee, to northeastern Oklahoma, and the state itself. What are the operating hours? When can people come out and visit this great museum? Well, this is a wonderful part of it. We're open seven days a week, year-round, Monday through Saturday, 10 till 5, and on Sundays, 1 till 5. The admission is $3 for adults, seniors 65 and over, $2, and students $1.50. We do have group rates, and tours are available, which I do love to give the tours, so we love to see you come as a group also. Well, Mary, many medos for giving us the tour here. Uh, before I let you go, anything that else you'd like to say about the museum? Well, this is our 43rd year in operation. We still have two of the original founding members, uh, which were the Dakota Club, uh, that are still with us. Marie Wadley, she'll be 102 December 16th. She was one of the founding members, and Dora Grayson also, and they visit us frequently at the museum. So please come and visit us. We'd love to show you. We're always changing uh, our exhibits, so if you live in the area, don't feel like you've been here once and you can't come back, because we're always changing to offer you something new. We want to thank the nice folks at the Five Civilized Tribes Museum here in Muskogee for being such a hospitable host to us here. And we hope that any time that you're out in the Muskogee area, 
please make it a point to come out and visit this great museum. You'll be glad that you did. My name is Thompson Gouge, Public Relations Representative for the Muscogee Creek Nation, and uh, we are here to set up a booth, an information booth about the tribe in general. And we're here with, uh, together uh, in partnership with the Creek Nation Casino because they are promoting our new river, Riverside uh, Casino on 81st Street. So, uh, but we're here as a tribe to promote our tribe in general. So far it's, it's been a great, we've we ran to uh, a lot of uh, tribal citizens, uh, some of the ones that actually didn't know much about the tribal department programs, uh, and it's, I think it's a great outreach just to try to make contact with some of the citizens. And to the non-Indians and non-Native Americans that don't understand what we do have here as a tribe and how we support our communities here. A lot of festivities happening here today at the Tulsa State Fair and we are in the Quick Trip Center and it is my great honor here to be with this gentleman standing right here beside me talking with 1978 Heisman Trophy winner and former University of Oklahoma star running back Mr. Billy Sims. Mr. Sims, we appreciate your time here, and uh, you know, as we mentioned, everyone is around here today, just taking part in the activities. Oh, and yes. uh, lovely day out. You got to be enjoying yourself here. Oh, without a doubt. Well, especially as meeting all the fans of Oklahoma and everything. Even though I'm from Texas, I, I consider myself an Oklahoman now after 30 years of, of being here in the Sooner Sooner Nation. Now, I want to revert back here to your playing career, and specifically that year of 1978 so magical for you. You captured the Heisman Trophy and of course you were surrounded by an extraordinary talented team. Part of the um, assistance I guess if you will you got that the year was from an extraordinary offensive line oh. and I know Greg Roberts he was the Outland Trophy. Yes he was my roommate matter of fact and we just had a lot of great guys on that line. And playing next to him was a Native American Cherokee a uh, boy by the name of Sammy Jack Clapham. Big Sammy Jack. Oh, man, he could block. I know the first time when I came to Oklahoma, I said, that's the biggest Indian Native American guy. Because I, 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 in Hooks, Texas, you know, we never see Native American. Uh, and I was just in awe of Sammy. I'm like, man, <laughs> you know, like anybody ought to be able to run behind him. And he, he that just that whole out, that line that year with him and those guys was, was uh, incredible, incredible. And he, he definitely, you know, he's not here now. He's passed on, and I always miss him. And he was a great pro player, not just in college. He did it on the, on the next level. Sure did. Former University of Oklahoma running back and 1978 Heisman Trophy winner, Billy Sims. Mr. Sims, as always, appreciate it. Yes, All sir. the best. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate it. Okay. Boomer! <laughs> Sooner! <laughs> All right. The 40th annual Seminole Nation Days was kicked off last weekend, and Gerald was fortunate enough to go down and check out the festivities. I tell you, it's always great to go down to Seminole country down there. You meet just so many great people, no matter what event is going on, whether it's the arts and crafts, uh, the big 5K run that they had earlier that day, and as Jason alluded to earlier, the concerts that they had that evening, all really capped off, too, by the parade that they have through the streets of downtown Seminole that morning. Just all great things happening there with the Seminole Nation days. and. Uh, Again, our thanks to the Haney family for just showing us uh, all around and showing us all what Seminole Country is all about. We've got a chance to catch up with their leader there, the Honorable Principal Chief, Mr. Kelly Haney. I'm here with the Principal Chief of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, Mr. Kelly Haney. Mr. Haney, a lot of events happening this weekend. What makes this weekend so special for the Seminole Nation? Well, first of all, for this particular celebration, it's the fourth annual uh, celebration of Seminole Nation Days in, in Oklahoma. Chief Haney, in your years as Principal Chief here, in your administration, you've seen the tribe progress every year, and it culminates in this holiday each year, this event, the celebration. You've got to be proud of how the tribe has progressed each year. Uh, I'm proud of the people who make it happen. Uh, I, uh, I, of course, I've been in government over 30 years, and 22 years in the Oklahoma legislature, 16 as a state senator, so I have a background in government and I have a background in business and, and in education. So we, uh, I kind of put all that together and I can provide the kind of leadership that's uh, needed at this time for the Seminole Nation. There'll be others who come along to do as well, if not better, probably better. <laughs> this afternoon you give your State of the Nation address to the citizens and to everyone attending. What are some of the issues that you'll be bringing up and talking about? Uh, we will be talking about the uh, 
uh, progress of the Seminole Nation in this very short period of time. And we will be, and the theme is uh, for, for the common good. Uh, many of our programs we've designed to be, uh, to be helpful to all of the citizens of Seminole County. So we don't restrict it just to our citizens and to native people. Uh, if we can help other people, we do that. We try to be good uh, community uh, you know, participants uh, in, in the county. Well, I know that's always a good representation to have uh, Native Americans are helping everyone, regardless of tribe or, or their background, that we are partners in all this and helping one another. That's true, and, and I think a young man said it best when, he, when I was sharing with him what we do. He said, that's the Indian way, is to help other people, and we're doing that in Seminole Nation. I'm very proud of the people here. Principal Chief of the Seminole Nation, Mr. Kelly Handy. Mr. Handy, appreciate your time. All Thank the best. You. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, Gerald, we're going to take our last commercial break before we wrap things up here today, but want to tell you to make sure and come back. We'll have the behind-the-scenes segment. We'll be talking with a member of our nation here at the Muscogee Creek Nation and make sure that we are able to handle any situation, whether it be fire, flood, rain, sleet, snow, or storm. This guy and his department are always there. Make sure everything stays even kill. So come right back and we'll have the behind the scenes segment right here on Native News Today. Hi, I'm Jason Salzman, and we're very proud of our program here at Native News Today. But what you may not know, it's just a small part of a fully functioning multimedia center, the Muscogee Creek Nation Communications Department. The Communications Department is involved in every aspect of media, whether it be print with the Muscogee Nation News, the official publication of the Muscogee Creek Nation, as well as graphic design, the graphic design department here can offer everything from event invitations to banners to even calendars and desk decals. It's all involved here, as well as photography, a professional grade studio where Muscogee Creek citizens can receive discount rates for things such as senior pictures and family portraits. So for all of your multimedia needs, please don't hesitate to come down to the Muscogee Creek Nation Communications Department located in Altmonge at the Capitol Complex, or you can reach us by phone at 918-732-7720. Let us help you get your name out there. Alright, a little new thing we got on behind the scenes this week. I'm here with Mr. James Nichols and uh, you might be asking why am I sitting on the brush guard at the front of this truck here? Well, I'll tell you why. We got some new stuff going on with the emergency management truck. James, tell us a little bit about what's going on with the truck. Got a new light bar up there? Got a new light bar, some new lights just to make sure that we're safe whenever we're responding to emergencies uh, within the Creek Nation jurisdiction. Uh, just. Uh, a little bit safer for not only the ones that are driving it, but for everybody else that's on the roadways. Absolutely. Now, James, you're a, you're larger than life character. You, people see you out with the Muscogee Creek Nation, they say, that's James Nichols. He's the manager of the uh, emergency management office at the Muscogee Creek Nation. I tell you, may not know that much about you. So tell us a little bit about yourself, how you became a, uh, the manager here, and, and what you like about working with the emergency management office. Okay. Uh, as far as emergency management goes, uh, we do lots of planning for the nation. Uh, we plan for uh, disasters that might uh, potentially strike us as a nation, um, and of course we respond to disasters when, when they occur. Uh, I've been a part of emergency services, uh, volunteer fire department, uh, Omogi County Emergency Management. Also, I'm an EMT and work part-time for Omogi County EMS. So. As far as emergency services go, I've, I've been a part of it for, for quite some time. You see a lot of stuff out there. I mean, we've we've had floods, ice storms, you name it here at the Muscogee Creek Nation that's affected this tribe. I mean, what's the craziest thing that you had to do as part of your office that you would say? Uh, so far, uh, before we were able to obtain a, uh, a boat, a rescue boat, uh, we used my personal two-man boat to take a family and uh, it was actually a, a mother and her four children about two miles down a flooded roadway uh, in my little two-man boat just so they could get to their house and, and then get back out. So that was pretty scary with just a little trolling motor. It's pretty scary but a lot of fun, right? Oh, oh yeah. Anytime you can get out in a boat and uh, in water and you know just kind of cruise down a roadway where you can't drive, it's always fun. That's awesome, man. Now, you guys have even sort of, I'll say, cross-deputized, got together with other agencies even to help out. Now, I know an unfortunate incident we had not too long ago, uh, a young lady was um, uh, 
kidnapped and, and, and eventually, you know, it was found out that she was um, killed. But you guys were able to actually help and look for her when she was still missing with some, some of the authorities in Tulsa. You do a lot of that, right? Right. Uh, anytime any of the uh, other agencies within our jurisdiction need help, uh, they're more than welcome to call us. Of course, that incident, uh, Tulsa police, uh, they they got in touch with our light horse office and uh, and asked if we could assist. And uh, myself and Chief Jack Shackelford uh, took our our boat that we have for emergency management and uh, searched the Arkansas River uh, for the the girl that was missing. Yeah. And you guys um, did a wonderful job there. And a, a trusted establishment has been the Creek Nation Emergency Management to help out with all kinds of agencies, not only here in Almaggy but in Tulsa as well. So doing a wonderful job you and your staff keep it up James and uh, the veil has been lifted no longer are you behind the scenes you're out there in the open you guys are doing a wonderful job so thanks for being with us as always get a good look at the uh, beautiful truck and before we go hit the siren just a couple times okay we'll do hit it go ahead and you can go ahead and back out of here with me on this if you'd like just be careful <laughs> Behind the scenes with James Nichols. I'm gonna hold on here and make sure I don't fall off. I'm scared to death right now. Right. Stop! <laughs> and that's gonna conclude another production of the Native News Today for this afternoon. As always, we say a big mado to you for joining us this afternoon. And our thanks to all those that contributed this week to Native News Today. We want you to make sure and uh, stay tuned with us next week. we got some things coming up. We will uh, show you a historic day at the Cherokee Nation where they assumed operating control of W.W. Hastings Hospital there in Tahlequah from the Indian Health Service and as well as the Creek Nation Diabetes Summit. A little bit of health news around the Creek Nation too with the Diabetes Summit there in Alt Malgi. And also too, Jason, we want to introduce everyone to the Wind Warrior, mm -hmm. the Creek Nation Tobacco Prevention Program had their special talent night, as mm -hmm. you may have seen the commercials that we uh, ran the past month on our program, the special talent show that they had that night, and the Wind Warrior, mm -hmm. who battles the abuse of commercial tobacco, oh, wow. was uh, on hand there as well. That's a heck of a battle. So. You know, there are a, lot, a lot of people out there love the cigarettes, and uh, you know, it's just, we got to get everybody convinced that uh, maybe they're not so good for you. If, if you do smoke, maybe cut it down to, you know, maybe in half one day, or maybe in half one week, or something like that. Take the baby steps, you know? This health message you. brought to yeah. you by the Native News Today. Well, you know, I just want everybody to be, you know, have a healthy and happy life. That's right. Yeah. Our thanks to you all out there for contributing to the news stories and telling us that you really appreciate the program. We really appreciate all those nice comments you give us. Okay, we'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place.